pray for me this morning, but yesterday morning as I was getting ready to start my day, I, I was talking with the Lord and something Brother Lesson just mentioned just a second ago come to my mind and I didn't have no desire or even know that I was preaching this morning, Brother Lesson, uh, but he gave me something that, a word, a couple words, letting go. Brother Lesson just mentioned it about letting go. Yeah. Well, I, I was thinking as I was getting ready, I thought, well, that would be a good message, Lord. But I, I'm not supposed to preach tomorrow. That's Brother Weston's day to preach. Well, it wasn't just a couple hours later, Lynn messaged me and said, hey, can you preach in the morning? So you know what? It was God's will that there's something here and I thought about that letting go. And how us as humans, we have such a hard time. That's the, I believe the hardest thing we ever do in this life is letting go. Amen. And the first thing that you may think about is letting go would be that loved one that you had to let go of. That one that has went on to the other side. Whether it be in paradise that Jesus took the thief upon the cross this day you'll be with me in paradise that Brother Lesson is still so hard to let go of that one or that one that you knew that even though that they may spend their eternity in a devil's hell it's still to know that we've got to let go of that person that right there is probably one of the hardest things that we face is letting go but then there's so much other things in our life that we won't let go of that I thought about our past, Sister Lynetta. We hold on to our past like, and we take it with us even though Jesus said, He said that He forgave us of all of our sins and He took our sins and cast them as far as the east to the west to never be brought up or mentioned again. But guess what? We hold on to those things. But it's whenever we're able to let go of those things. Let go of them and trust in God. I thought about this morning as this message. Uh, the only way that I'm going to preach this message this morning is I'm able to let go. I've got to let go of mine and my own understanding and lean towards God. I thought as the, the day went on yesterday, as busy as I was after Lynn messaged me, I didn't get in about 8 o'clock last night, wore a slap out. I didn't have time to even open the Word of God. Uh, all I had on my mind all day, Kevin, was let go. Just let go and let God take over and trust in Him and let Him have His way with you. But as I was a man yesterday, a scripture came to my mind and I thought of a little woman back in 1 Kings here. If you want to turn your Bible to the 17th chapter of the 1 Kings and we'll read and this was what came to my mind yesterday. I thought about a little woman that had to let go of something that she was holding on to. And this was the last little bit of it. But Thank you, Lord. I thought the Bible don't tell me how long she held on to it. But I thought she's probably held on to it till she had to have it at the very last. Thank you, Lord. There in the 17th chapter of 1 Kings in the 10th verse, we're going to start reading. And I can't pronounce the name of this where he come from, but we're just going to do our best with it. Said so he arose and he went to Zephaphath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. He called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel, and I may drink. And as she was gone to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a, in a cruise. Behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after making for thee and for thy son, for thou said the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Thank you, 
you, Jesus. Most kind and precious Heavenly Father, Father, we come before you, Lord, this morning, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Father, for another day, another opportunity, Lord, that we can come before you and your children, Lord, that, Father, there be one here lost this morning, Lord, the message, Father, will not go out vain, Father, that you will just pierce the heart, show them, Father, that they can let go of this world and let go of those things, Father, that are holding them back, Father, from coming unto you, Lord. Father, we just ask, Father, this morning, you take this word, Father, you speak it through me, Father, push me out of the way, and Father, help me to learn to let go this morning, Father, that your, your will will be done here this morning, Father. Lord, we just thank you, we praise you, and ask these favors in Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you, Lord. You know, I thought about this little woman yesterday, I thought about how, Brother Leslie, how this little woman said that she only had one little bit, a little handful of meal, and a, a little bit said that she was going in and she was gathering two sticks and she was going to make a, make that last little cake there and her and her son was going to eat it they was going to die. Sister Lynette, I thought that maybe they was right in starvation. They was ready that this was the end of what they had. But I thought about there my mind went on there. I thought, how long did this little woman hold on to that last little handful of people? Another day before we make that game. I thought how many days did she trust in her own understanding and put her trust in that little bit of meal to sustain him just a few more days? But listen, Elanetta, when it came time that she was ready to be able to give it away, she was able to let go of that last bit of meal and that last little bit of oil. But that day, when she was ready to let it all go, she said, "Today is the day." You're going to have to let her go and trust in God. I want to read over here for just a second over here in Proverbs. He said, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. I tell you what, Brother Kevin, that's what it's going to take. We must put all of our trust in him. Trust and believe in him. Thank you, Lord. And that's whenever he'll start directing us in the way that we need to go. That's the truth. You know, I thought about Jesus this morning. I thought about him and I thought about Brother Lester and how he was a man in the flesh that we know that he was 100% God, but he was 100% man. Praise be the Lamb of God. But I thought, sister, um, never mind. I, listen here. I thought about how when he was down there in the garden in the garden of the city and he was a prey to his yeah. sweat but pain with great drops of blood. And yeah. He said, Father, he said, if this be your will, not my will. He said, but if this cup would pass from me, I thought about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and how he was even wanting to hold on to the past, the fleshly part of him. He wasn't willing to let go, Brother Kevin, but it took him to let go that maybe we would be saved through and by the shedding of blood. I'll tell you what the Bible says there. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. It took Jesus had to let go of this world and know that he was going to face some persecutions, knowing that he was going to have to face some hard times of coming yeah. that me and you may be saved, yes, Brother Lester. Yes, but it even took our Lord and Savior to be able to let go. What are you going to let go of this morning? What's holding you back this morning from coming? 
wants to be able to, that God may be able to use you. Because I tell you what, you're here for a purpose. You was born, He created you for That's a reason. He That's created you that you may give yes, Him sir. glory yes, through, through you and what He can choose you to do. That is the truth. You are a chosen vessel whether you accept it or not. But if you will just say, hey, I'll be that willing vessel this morning, He will fill you. Brother Kevin, that song you sung, drink it out of my saucer. I tell you what, not every day I sip out of my saucer. Not every day my cups are running over. But I'll tell you one thing, there's always something in my cup. It may not be running over, but there's always a little something in it for me. But you know why? Because I had to learn to let go and believe and trust in God that God, maybe my cup ain't running over today, but it may be tomorrow. You know, I read about a man in the Bible that, that God, that He was born for a purpose. He was born for a reason. He was one of the strongest men in the Bible that, that God ever created, Brother Les, and His name was Samson. Yes. And He had one purpose. He had one purpose was to defeat the Philistines. And that was His purpose. God created Him for one purpose. But Brother Hunter, He failed that. And you know why? Because He fell in love with a little woman. A little woman named Delilah. And no matter what happened, he couldn't let her go. No matter how bad things got with her, he couldn't let her go. I thought about right now, there's probably someone here right now this morning in a relationship that is no good for you. It's unpleasing unto God. There's things that you're holding on to this morning, whether it be drugs or the alcohol or it be whatever it may be, but you're holding on to something and you won't let go of it to come to God. Because you think this is all right. I love this boy. But listen what happened to Samson. Samson loved this little woman so much that it ended up costing him all his strength. He lost it all, didn't he? Yes, he did. And I'll tell you what, this morning, you keep holding on to that thing that you know is so good for you, and you'll lose it all. That's good. You'll lose everything you've got because you want to hold on to clean on to something. Good for you. I know people this morning, right now, I'm not saying they're here, but I there's the people right now, some woman right now that is in an abusive relationship that a man beats on her, he's no good for her, but no matter what, she stays right there with him. She will not leave him. Oh, because she feels she loves him so much, she clings to him. But that, it's no good. No, it's not. It'll not even do it. No. We gotta learn to let go and trust in God. When we trust in God, God will prevail for us. That's good preaching. That is good preaching. So the message this morning, are you willing to let go? No Romans 8 and 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to His purpose. You know, there's, God's got good things waiting on you this morning. God's got good things waiting on you tomorrow, Brother Lester. But we must trust and love in Him and not lean under our own understandings. You... This little preacher ain't got it all figured out. Trust me. I ain't got it all figured out. And I don't know it all by any. But I do know one thing. That I know my strength and my power comes from Jesus Christ. That's what I get. Greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Sometimes, Brother Kevin, as you sung that song, my faith gets a little weak. Yes, mine does too, brother. I believe that anyone that's ever walked with Jesus Christ, your faith will get weak from time to time. But praise be the Lamb of God this morning that whenever my faith starts getting weak, I can start calling upon a God that will strengthen me. He'll lift me up. He'll put me back up on the solid rock. And He'll let me know that hey, it's all right to fail, but just get back up. And this morning, He'll do the same for you, for we know that He is no respecter of persons. But are you willing to let go? It's good preaching. You know, the children of Israel, they, they, they fell into that same category. The children of Israel, let's just go on back to Pharaoh. and Let's talk about Pharaoh the king. I'll tell you what, the only reason that Pharaoh had to go through the place that he had to go through is because he wouldn't let go. 
He had the Israel children. He had them under bondage. He had them under slavery. If he would have done what Moses said to do, what God told him to do, let my children know. But guess what? He had a hold of them, Brother Kevin. He wouldn't let them know. Tell hey, you what, some of, someone's here this morning sitting here in that same bondage. The devil's got a hold of you and the devil ain't going to let you go. But I serve a God that's bigger than that devil. Amen. Amen. I serve a God Amen. that's bigger than anything you face, anything that you've got to hold on to, he will let loose you and let you go. I believe I read about Lazarus there in the Bible where Lazarus is dead and he was wrapped in grave clothes. But whenever they wrote the stone, brother, uh, less than away, Jesus said, loose him and let him go. This morning, Jesus can loosen you and let you go from whatever you're holding on to. Absolutely. That's such good preaching, John. Everybody, my Lord, listen to it. You know, we're in Isaiah in the forty third in the forty forty third chapter and eighteenth verse. He said, "Remember ye, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not? Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert." Listen, Brother Leslie, he said, remember not those things of former exactly past. Right. Don't look back into your old person. I believe 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old oh, things are passed away. What Behold, all saying? things are become new. I tell you what, I, I was there. I was that lost sinner. I was that one brother Kevin that held on to my past. I held on to that bottle. I held on to those pills. I held on to that marijuana. Right, right, this is what I thought made me happy. This is what made me feel good. I'll tell you what, there ain't nothing that makes you feel no better than knowing you're a child of God. I'll tell you what, I thought I would be happy. I thought I would feel good. I'll tell you what, the only time you'd ever see me get up in front of a bunch of people, oh, I love singing karaoke on Friday night down at the bar. Yeah, I'd get good and drunk and I'd get up and sing a little bit. But praise be to God to get the Holy Spirit in you. God good. Yes, He is. Thank you, Lord, for your precious word. Thank you, Lord, for the gospel. I think I'm going to read it. 
I done pulled it out. But listen here. <laughs> Paul, Brother Leslie, he said in one part there that he said, I say unto you, brethren, he said, I've not actually took a hold of it yet like I should. But he said, you know what? He said, I'm striving for a crown. He said, I'm striving for something better. Glory to God. And he knew it was real, Brother Eric. He knew what he had to get a hold of. But you know what? Even Paul had to totally let go of it. It took Paul a while. It took Paul a while to be able to finally let go, Brother Leslie, of, yeah. of, of, the, of his former past. You know, we know we know Paul's past, and, and Paul was a he was a murderer. I don't care, maybe he didn't murder himself, but he had it done for him. So you know what? That made him a murderer too. Yeah. He knew what he had done. I think what Paul said for one thing, he said that I have that, that he wasn't worthy to be called an apostle. Oh, apostle. Because he persecuted the church. But he said, I have loved it more than all. Yes. I tell you what, another thing I thought about the little woman that she sung about this morning, and that about the woman that was convicted, called in the very act of adultery. And when they brought her out, they was going to sung her to death. You know what? Her sins were great. I read about another little woman in the Bible that come in and anointed Jesus' feet. Love me the most. Yes, sir. Brother Kevin, maybe that's why I love God so much because I know He forgave me. Glory to God. Glory to God. He forgave me. Hallelujah. As that song you sung, I was guilty. I was guilty, but mercy walked in. You know that mercy that Brother Kevin sung about, it's here this morning. Absolutely. That mercy's here this morning. I should be sent to a devil's hell, Brother Lester. That's, That's what I deserve. Yeah. I deserved every bit of it to go to hell. I don't deserve to go to heaven. And the only reason I get to go to heaven is through and by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's through and by because I believe. I thought about that song and I love that song. I believe, Brother Kevin, you son, that I believe in a man named Jesus. The Bible says that he that believeth with the heart and confesseth with the mouth, the same shall be saved. But it takes you to come this morning to believe him with your heart. That's true. That's true. I read in another part where Jesus told the disciples, He said, Go ye out to all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he didn't stop there, brother. He said, He who believeth not shall be damned. I'm not a disciple. I used to think I was a disciple. I'm a follower of Christ. Brother Les, and I believe maybe I am a disciple. I'm a follower of Christ. Yes. I'm not a prophet. I believe I am anointed of God to preach the gospel. I do believe that with all my heart. And I'm here to tell you this morning, there's a way to escape hell. There's a way to get out of going to eternal damnation. Good preaching, brother. Good preaching. And it's through and by Jesus Christ. You know, the first thing I had to realize when I was a lost sinner that I was lost. I had to realize that I needed something more than just what I could give. More than what I could do. And Brother Kevin, and sometimes I feel like everything was going great when I was a lost man. Why do I need God? But you know what? I went through more bad times than I went through good times. And not that every day is still a bed of roses for me. But I'll tell you the difference between then and that. Because then I had nobody. The only person I had to depend on was me. I had to get myself back out of the truck. I got myself in it. I had to get myself out. Well, I thank God I've got him now. Woo! I got him now. I got him to guide me and lead me. And when I do get myself in trouble, and trust me, I do from time to time, probably more than I should, but I feel God and God that loves me and a God that will reach down and pull you up out of the morning clay and put your feet back up on a solid rock. Now let me ask you this, and you don't have to answer, but if you're in your loss this morning, and I don't know who's lost and who ain't lost, I don't know what God does. Listen, I 
I'm going to ask you a question. Do you have that this morning? Do you have that that someone that will get you out of the mess you're in? Get you through it? Or do we just continue to hold on to the things that we cherish so much? The Bible says in one part, and I know that we always look back at Mother Brother Lesson when we quote this scripture, but it said, What would it cost for man to gain the whole world but lose to be sold? Brother, uh, Kevin, there's so much other things that we hold on to besides money. We hold on to every little thing, we hold on to all of these things, but what would it do any good if we profit all those things? If we had all the love in the world, if everybody could see us, sister Doris, they just love us and take it to us. If we had all the fine things in the world, we had everything we'd ever want. And I'm not talking about what money you buy either, because something money just can't buy, but it can. And I'll tell you what money won't buy. Money will not buy your salvation. The only way you're going to get salvation is through and by the blood of Jesus Christ. He came and died. Brother Aaron, he did say he did. He rose on the third and final day. And Brother Kevin, I believe in one part I read there, he said, I live that ye shall live also. Because he lives, you can live. Amen. And I'm not talking. You might be sitting here this morning and saying, well, I'm alive, I'm breathing, I'm well, but I'll tell you what, if you're here lost, you're a walking dead man. Or you're a walking dead woman. I was once dead, Brother Kevin, but you know, as the prodigal son said there, his father said, my son was once dead, but praise be to God, he's alive again. He can come home. Hallelujah. You can come home this morning to that heavenly home this morning and became alive. Well, Jamie, your, your week's been different this week than it was last week, ain't it? Guarantee it. This week has been different than last week. Thank you, Lord. If you're here and you're lost, Thank you, Jesus. I promise you, you come this morning and you give it all to Him. Maybe you're saved this morning. I mean, I don't know. Trust me, Christians hold on to things, too. Yeah. Trust me, Christians hold on to things, too. I hold on to things. Something I gotta pray about too, Brother Kevin. To learn to let things go. And trust in the Lord lean on them, I don't understand. That's the truth. You know, we can hold on to some things in our life, Brother Kevin, that we know that is unpleasing unto God, but we continue to hold on to it. We continue to do it. And we say, well, I don't thank God for that. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says God he said, I was weak at me and Dinger, but no more. He gave us a big old book to read and study and nobody. And you know something else he gave us, Brother Kevin, that them old men of old times didn't have? It's called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit to direct us and lead us and guide us. Right. Now I think what, Brother Aaron, they ain't a time that I don't feel that the Holy Spirit ain't already said, whoa, hold on. Hold on, mother. Now I could got two choices to make. I can either go to God and ask for forgiveness and make it right, Brother Kevin, or I can just shut it off and show it. That's all right. It'll be all right. No, it won't be all right in the end. We must get it right and get it to care of. Yes, sir. And I'll tell you what, there's nothing like today. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Amen. Today is the day of the Lord. Today is the day to make things right. You may say, well, I, I've got time. I'll wait until tomorrow. Are you sure? Can you sit here and answer that and be 100% confident in yourself that you have tomorrow to make things right? Yeah. Well, I'll do, it, I'll do it tonight when I go to bed. Are you 100% without a shadow of doubt that you're going to make it the way you feel on your head tonight? Because I don't know if I will. I'll be honest there and I don't know. I believe maybe the Lord will allow me to live to see another day, but that's not promised, Brother Ted. I'll tell you what's promised right now. Right now is promised. This, this, right now. Not another second. Not another minute. I would want to know that if I 
was lost and I was on my way to the altar and I fell right there and died dead in a hammer. But you know what, Sister Lynette? I was saved when I got out of the CKA. I was saved when I got out of the CKA. I was saved when 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 I was saved when